This webcast will give you a brief introduction into the analysis of DNA methylation data. Genomic DNA can be methylated. These methylations mostly occur at C's cytosine followed by G's guanine. To measure these methylation patterns, bisulfite sequencing can be employed. In this process, genomic DNA is treated with bisulfite, effectively turning every C into a T-thymine, but leaving methylated C's unaltered. When sequencing those bisulfite-treated cDNAs, the final reads contain a lot of T's when the sense strand was sequenced. But for each T that occurs in the read, it is uncertain if in the genome that actually is a T or an unmethylated C, whereas for a C in the read, we know that this is a methylated C in the genome. This uncertainty about the T's in the read make the mapping more complicated, but in the following I will show you how you can easily map DNA methylation data with our Genomatics Mining Station. The Genomatics Mining Station allows you to analyze all kinds of next-generation sequencing data sets. For now, I want to quickly show you how to map DNA methylation data. I've prepared a project with DNA methylation data provided by Illumina, which was generated using the RRBS protocol. So let's have a look. Up here you can see the imported read files, and if we click on any of them, we get statistics about the reads. Here we can see that it's a FASTQ file, it's in base code, and we see here that we have a lot of G's and a lot of T's, and a small number of C's. And that's because C's only remain in the reads if they are methylated. So this can give us a quick overview about the, the raw reads that we can import into the project. Now to map these bisulfite reads, we can simply click on Genomatics Mapper. We can say we want to map all four lanes of the BT20 cell line, which is a breast cancer cell line, from the human organism. Uh, we want to map that to the genome. And now we simply have to tell the mapper that this is bisulfite sequencing data and then the mapper will consider the CT conversion during the mapping. Now we can set different parameters and we can click on done to start the mapping. For now, I want to just um, open the mapping results I've previously run and we can click on BT20 here and that will show us some mapping statistics. How many unique hits did we get? How many multiple hits? How many ambiguous hits? And how many reads could not be mapped to the genome? Also, we get distributions of how many reads we could map without a mismatch for unique and multiple hits. We can also do quality control um, or read classification. For example, we can look what genomic regions are enriched um, within the map reads. And in this case, exons are enriched and also promoters. And that's not a surprise because a lot of CPG islands overlap with exonic regions, but more importantly with promoters. The last thing I wanted to show you is how you can visualize DNA methylation patterns in the genome browser. Here I've preloaded three cell lines, the BT20, the BT474, and the MCF10A. And for each I've loaded two files. The unique file will give you information about the overall coverage, and the methylation file will give you information about um, what regions are highly methylated. The first file, the unique file, is plotted in local common auto scale and it's plotted as a line whereas the methylation file is also plotted as local common auto scale, but plotted as a bar. So the black line you're seeing here gives you the overall coverage, and here you can see that some regions are not covered at all, and that has to do with the RRBS enrichment protocol that was used here. Now the bars here indicate to you the fraction of methylation that we're seeing here. So in this case we see complete methylation because the bar is as high as the black line. And down here we see a lot less methylation, and the tooltip can give you the exact numbers. Here we have a coverage of 20 in total, and three of those reads that cover this region were methylated. You can drag around the genome to look at different regions, or you can zoom in into a particular CPG island um, to look at the methylation in more detail. Right now it makes sense to pull down the actual sequence to look at the CPGs that were actually methylated. And here you can also see that you have some CPGs that are not methylated in some cell lines and um, only barely methylated in, in others. Um, right here you have an example of differential methylation where in the BT20 cell line you have complete methylation where the methylation in the reference cell line MCF10A is very low. 
I hope you found this introduction helpful. For more information, please go to genomatics.com or contact our support.